20 years of manned missions in the USSR. Space flights initiated by the launch of the Soviet world's first artificial satellite on October 4, 1957, and the first manned flight on April 12, 1961, under the scientific and technical direction by academician Sergei Pavlovich Korolev, opened up really fantastic possibilities to the mankind in exploring the universe. Space technology is already serving the mankind in order to explore and master the near space. The near Earth orbit is the outpost for solving many problems on the Earth. Our planet is not yet sufficiently equipped to provide comfortable living for the man. Uncontrollable processes are going on in the atmosphere, destroying the results of human activity, taking heavy tolls. Climatic conditions are severe and unstable in many regions of the Earth. The space program in this country is designed to advance science and technology to meet practical needs of the people's economy. The man will have to learn to control processes within and outside the atmosphere. Today we have the Salute long-term orbital station that has been thoroughly developed. The man is space flight with the longest duration of 185 days, demonstrates achievements of the Soviet science and technology. Our space program puts a special emphasis on manned flights. No substantial exploration of space is possible without the man being directly involved. The creation of orbital stations is far from being accidental. This was prompted by the logical development of space missions. As of this date, the Salute station is the best among the Soviet manned spacecraft introduced by the Vostok vehicles. The station required a new manned transportation spacecraft to be represented by Soyuz. The creation of orbital complexes cannot be foreseen without on-orbital assembly of space vehicles. The most simple solution appears to be the docking of vehicles being exercised under direct control by the cosmonaut. It was the way chosen by the US engineers which, however, excludes the docking of automatic vehicles. Quite a few problems have to be solved. These are on-orbital maneuvering, search, rendezvous and docking of both manned and unmanned vehicles. also necessary to assure habitability and high functional capability of crews throughout a long duration flight. The weightlessness has first manifested itself in the 18-day mission. Andrea Nikolaev and I performed the 18-day space flight aboard the Soyuz 9 spacecraft. This is the spacecraft. 
Upon return to the Earth, we have faced the problem of readaptation. We have been in the space in order to get used to the weightlessness. We got used to it, did a good job, but we have come down physiologically changed. In a few months after our return, we have been invited by NASA to visit the United States. We have met with American astronauts Frank Borman and Jim Lovell, who have just performed the 13, almost 14-day flight. After their return to the Earth, they felt as bad as we did. Many optimists at that time were pessimistic about space flight duration, and we also were hesitant. Then, joint efforts by scientists, designers, medical personnel, with active participation of cosmonauts, have helped to develop aids to sustain weightlessness. And so stations and aids are created. And experience of our space flight shows that the man can fly half a year, that is pretty hard, very strenuous work, but we are optimistic about the future. The salute stations are being improved. The efficiency of this service use is increasing with experience of long duration manned flights being steadily accumulated. During the decade, the stations are used to carry out a large amount of scientific investigations, technical experiments, earth observation and photography. During that time, our cosmonauts three times conducted a space war. The world's first space war was taken in 1965 by the cosmonaut Alexei Leonov. He later became the crew member of the joint Soviet-American flight conducted in accordance with the Soyuz Apollo program. The parameters of the salute station are being constantly improved, its service life extended, its payload increased. The station becomes refurbishable. Its re-equipment, refurbishment and maintenance do not require return to the earth but may be performed while in orbit. Progress cargo spacecraft are used to deliver fuel and cargo aboard the station. The scientific equipment delivered in orbit derives from amples with bacterial species to a 10 meter space radio telescope. year long term operation allowed to carry out five primary missions and nine international space flights in accordance with the Intercosmos program. The Salute mission now being successfully implemented is a significant contribution to space researchers over 20 years of manned space flights. At this stage of development, the space technology had come closely to the creation of large-sized structures to be deployed on the Earth orbit. This is necessitated by our current needs. Речь идет о создании систем широкого использования солнечной энергии, систем 
Here we talk about the development of systems designed to be extensively used in solar energy applications. Also the systems which are capable of not only monitoring the Earth atmosphere processes, but controlling weather and climate in certain parts of the world. And at last, the question of manufacturing in space is put into agenda. Certainly, an important part of this will be played by developments in long-term orbital base stations where the man could not only live but the work in conditions close to those of the Earth. space is going on. Much has to be done in the future. Gigantic telescopes penetrating the depth of the universe, power stations bringing the solar energy to the Earth, space plants with technological processes being possible only in orbit. Today, this is but a hypothetical picture of the near space in the future. What will be in reality? We believe that it won't take long for the man to become the master of his own planet, to obtain additional solar flux to control weather and climate. Our planet is the cradle of the mankind. We must preserve it. The people of the Earth must be happy on it.